Okay, let's talk about services for a bit. Uh, so in Librium MS, we do most of our monitoring via SNMP, and we can also monitor and alert on syslog messages and SNMP traps. But if you have something you want to monitor and it's not supported by any of these methods, then you need to look at services. And I'll say the name services is really not doing this feature any favors. Um, you should really just think of services as a script. They're pretty much interchangeable. Uh, because when you add a service to a device, what you're really saying is when you pull this device at the polling interval, run this script. And based on the output of this script, or more exactly the exit code, we can then determine if what we did in this script was a success, it's up, it's fine, or it wasn't fine, uh, there's an issue, and we want to alert on it. Now, since we're doing all this logic in a script, we can really alert on anything. Uh, really, the only limitation is that you complete the script and you have a result within the polling interval. So to give you a real-world example of this, I had a networking device that I could only see the status of this thing I was trying to monitor if I actually SSH'd into the device and did a show command on it. Uh, this status was not available via SNMP or really any other method, so I wrote a script that does just that. At every polling interval, five minutes in my case, it SSH's into the device, runs the command, and based on the output of that command, I could then determine in the script if this was what I expected and everything's fine, or it's not what I expected and I want to alert on it. Now, these scripts that you run are stored and executed on the Librium MS server. Uh, if you have distributed pollers set up, you must still store these scripts on the Librium MS server that has the web GUI. And that's because that's how you select them in the Librium MS web GUI. But you don't necessarily need to execute them on the web GUI machine. You can put the same exact scripts on a distributed polar and then run them on that machine. Now, if you look at the documentation here, they're talking a lot about Nagios plugins and scripts. Um, and that's because that's how Nagios worked. Uh, it did the same thing with scripts. It ran them and then based on the exit code, it determined if it was okay or not. So that's why they're talking about Nagios, but there really is no reason why you need to use Nagios scripts. You can write your own or use pre-made ones or use Nagios scripts. It really doesn't matter. The end result's the same. We're running a script and based on the exit code, that's what we're gonna alert on. Okay, so probably the first thing you want to do is go into your Liberate MS installation and enable services because if you install by default, you don't have a services menu here at the top. Uh, we need to get that added. So in order to do that, you actually uh, SSH into your Liberate MS machine. Uh, we need to switch to the Liberate MS user. So we'll go root first to do that. Okay, and now we can run the lnms uh, command config set. So we want to do lnms config set, and the value they want is down here. Right here, show services. Now, if you watched my last video or one before that, I talked about the configuration, and this is still referencing config.php, but we don't want to use that anymore. We want to set it in the database. So what we're going to do here is the lnms config set command, and we're going to do the same thing, uh, show underscore services. Well, first we can get it to see what it's set to first. So show services. Okay, it's false, so let's make it true. So now if I refresh my page here, I should get a services menu. And there it is at the top. So this is where you would go and configure all your services or and see all the services for all your devices. Okay, the next thing we wanna check here is the location of your scripts. And uh, by default, it's in this folder right here, uh, user lib Nagios plugins. Uh, and, you confirm, and you can confirm that by doing a LNMS config get on that setting. There, so anytime you wanna run a script, uh, you would put it in this directory. And obviously you can set that to a new directory if you don't like that directory for some reason. But uh, that's the directory we're gonna use because that's the default. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a service to a device here. Now I've go gone ahead and went into my user lib Nagios plugins directory and I've created a script. 
And basically what this script will do is just check the status of our RD, cache D, and system D and see if it's active or not. Um, the basis of this command is this system ctl is active rd cache d dot service and basically it'll come back with inactive if it's inactive and it is right now system ctl status rd cache d it's inactive so let's go ahead and start that and we'll run the same command again is active or already cached D and now it's active. So that's the basis of my script. Uh, when my script runs, it's gonna run that command and see if it's active or not. Um, so what I've done here is uh, I've created a script, check underscore rrd cached D dot pi. Um, you need to make sure that any script you put in this directory is prefixed with check underscore. Uh, that's a requirement for Librium MS. That's how it knows in the web GUI that yes, this is a script that Liberty MS can run uh, and can be selected. So make sure that your script name has check underscore in front of it. That being said, uh, we can run this script now, but first we actually need to add execute permissions to everything in this script that was in the doc. So we'll do that real quick. Change mod plus X. Uh, let's just make sure it has execute permissions now and it does. So now we can run this script. Okay, and we ran that script. It said, okay, RRD cache, RRD cache D service is running and pipe status equals one. Uh, so let's just stop it real quick to make sure that it'll come back uh, with an error message. Okay, so let's run our script again. Okay, now it's saying critical RRD cache D service is down, pipe, un, uh, pipe status equals zero. Okay, so... We know our script is working. It's saying OK or critical, depending on whether the service is, uh, are, is working or not. Um, but now you got to kind of understand about how Librium MS knows whether this was working or not. So if we look at our script real quick. We'll do nano. So this is just a quick, dirty script I wrote. It's probably not ready for prime time, but regardless, it works for now. <laughs> So uh, basically all I'm doing is running that command system CTL is active RD cache D uh, and I'm capturing the output of that. And, you know, they put it in bytes and put a new line character. So I have to format the string correctly. But eventually I get to the point where I'm just checking to see if what I ran that command, if it's active, I'm going to print this message. OK, RD cache D service is running. Uh, but if it's anything else, if it's anything but active, then I'm going to print this message critical RD cache D service services down pipe status equals zero. So what is telling Librian MS if this service uh, or script was good or valid or not is this exit code here. This exit code zero means that yes, this script was fine. Everything was good on it. But this exit code two means no, something was wrong. This is a critical uh, error and you should alert on it. Um, this message, this okay, RRD service D, everything up until this pipe here is uh, just a message. That's it. It has nothing to do whether your script is working or not working. It's just simply a status message. You can put whatever you want in there. You don't have to put okay. You don't have to format it that way. It's whatever you want, uh, whatever you want. Now, after this pipe, that does matter. This has to be formatted correctly. And this is performance data. Uh, this is actually not telling you uh, whether the script should alert or uh, not alert. It's actually gonna be used for performance data to draw the graph. And because I only have a status that is either up or down, I only have really two performance things I can put in there as zero or one. So when this script runs over time, after it gets maybe an hour or so of polling uh, and it starts to build the graph you'll see that you'll pretty much have a straight line at one since this rrd cache d service is working but if for some reason rrd cache d service goes down uh then it will graph it'll start graphing zero uh in the graph so then you can go back in time and look at your graph and said oh yeah look at this service was down at this time came back up at this time uh that's how you can keep track of uh a graphing of your services so this is not a requirement. You don't have to put this pipe in here. If you just simply want to know if something's up or down, you could just admit that. You don't have to put that in there. You could just have this and the exit code, and that's all you need.
Um, so that's being said, uh, now that we know how the script runs, uh, we can now run it. So let's go ahead and start adding it to a device. So to do that, we just go up here to services, add service. Uh, now we're going to put a name in here and keep in mind that all these fields are saved in the database. So when you go to create alert rules, these might come in handy in determining uh, between other services or exactly what you want to alert on. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but anyways, we could just put RRD cache D check for this one. Okay, and localhost, the device. So I'm going to add this service or this script to this device. And what that means is that when the localhost pulls, it's going to run this script. Um, and also when I do alerts, uh, the localhost will be the device that gets alerted on. Uh, it, it's not going to say that localhost is down. It's going to say, hey, localhost has a service that is down uh, on this device, much like if a port was down on that device. Uh, so in any case, we're going to check the localhost. Uh, this is where you're going to select the script you want to run. I want to run RRD cache D description, whatever you want to put in there. I'm not going to put anything in there for now. Now, remote host and parameters. Uh, so remote host, uh, this basically overwrites um, the IP that's in here. So if you wanted, if you had something you wanted to monitor that wasn't even in LibreNMS, like the device wasn't even in LibreNMS, you could put the IP here uh, and overwrite it. Uh, and additionally, um, you can put parameters in, and these are basically, uh, argument parameters when you run the command. So if I go over here to my shell real quick. So if I run this command like this, uh, that's fine. We've already seen that, but what's actually going to happen when Librian MS runs it, it's actually going to put a dash H and it's going to put the IP address of local host, because that's what I have selected for the device, uh, right here. Uh, or it would put the IP address. If there was an IP address for the device, it would put that in instead. Um, in any case, I'm not really using that. So my script just ignores that dash H, but you should keep that in mind if you're writing your own script. Um, you don't have to, uh, you're going to have to specify a dash H and after that is the host, either the host name or the IP address. Um, but if you put an IP address in here, like if I put 1.1.1.1, uh, uh, it'll basically overwrite that local host with 1.1.1.1. Sorry, my uh, screen is uh, scrolling over to the next line there, but uh, you get the point. Um, and also parameters. Uh, these are just extra parameters that your script might want. Yeah, there we go. Like n 10.34.64.10. Let's just say like that. So basically, if I was running my script, it would put this in instead. Like that. So you just keep in mind that when you're writing your scripts or anything, these parameters and remote hosts get put in there. But in my case, I'm not using either of these, so uh, it won't matter. Uh, I will just delete these. Okay. And these are just for ignoring, ignoring the alerts and disabling polling. We're not going to worry about that. So we're going to add it. Okay, we've added a service. If we click on services, all services, we'll see all of our services listed in here. Um, and we can see here is the one service. So let's go ahead and switch over to our LibreNMS user. And we're going to do LNMS Polar Services 1. I'm pretty sure that's my device ID. Yes, 1. I think you can also see your device IDs in here. Yeah, 1. Okay, we got to do dash VVV. Okay, uh, this is a way to test your services to see if they're running or what you expect uh, you got out of them. So uh, LMS polar colon services one dash VVV. Uh, so that basically just turned on all the debugging and verboseness. Um, and then you can see here, this is where it actually ran the script. And as you can see, it pushed that dash H local host, but I'm ignoring that. So I don't really care about that. And this is the message it got back critical RD cache service down. Uh, this is the value for the perf data that was after that, um, pipe symbol where I did status, uh, equals zero. Um, and this is basically just our updating the RRD data source. So, uh, and we, we're good. We, we pulled it. So if we go back in here, we should see an alarm now. Yes. So this is an alarm now. It's broken, not working. So let me start RRD cache D.
Okay, I started it. Let me run it again. Okay, did a little bit different here. Okay, now it said okay, and my status is one. So let me go ahead and refresh here. Okay, now you can see my RRD cache D check is working. Now, you can't see that graph from this page. You actually got to drill down into the device and go to services here, the services tab, and then you can click on detail, and then you'll see the graph here. Now, I just started adding this, so it's going to take a little bit to draw the graph, but yeah, you get the point. Here's the graph. That'll either show one or zero if it's up or down. And another thing about this performance data, you might want to graph uh, stuff that doesn't even matter if it's up or down. Maybe you just want to get a count. Uh, you're already doing the up or down, you know, in Liberty Math, just if it pings or SNMP doesn't respond. So you don't care about up or down. You're just trying to get performance data out of this device. In which case, uh, I mean, I guess you could always return. Uh, that's probably some reason you'd want to return if it's down or not. But uh, for the most part, you could just always just return performance data and you can have a graph here, uh, you know, of just graphing your stuff. Okay, so two more things here real quick. Uh, the first is services templates. Now, I don't really use this as much. Um, and basically, this is a way to apply services to a bulk devices or uh, apply it to a lot of devices. Um, and the reason I don't use it much is because most of my scripts have uh, parameters that change per device. So I can't really apply it to a group of devices uh, without changing those parameters. So I guess I could get it started and then go back in there and change them manually. Uh, but to be honest, uh, if I was going to bulk add a bunch of services to devices, I would just use the API uh, because then I can specify and do whatever I want. But this feature is in there, um, you know, like if you wanted to apply it to a device group or something uh, to use use. So uh, this feature is relatively new. I don't know how well it works, but um, I know it's there for you to use. Um, and the other thing would be alert rules, uh, since we haven't really alerted on this uh, outside of Librarian MS. But uh, in order to create an alert rule, you just uh, create one like you would always do. And services.service underscore type equals the name of your script you want to alert on. And then services.services underscore status uh, equals two. And this is basically the exit code uh, of the script and two means alert or warning. Um, so that's how you would create an alert rule on this. Okay, so that just about does it for services. Uh, I'm quickly running out of things to talk about here. So uh, with this software, I've covered a lot. So if there's any other videos you want to see or just anything at all, really, uh, in this kind of network management system world, um, I'm kind of all ears. I like it all. So uh, I might drop some gray log videos because uh, I've been heavily doing that recently. So uh, I'm pretty familiar with that now. So I might uh, talk about that. I, I was actually also thinking about doing like a live stream maybe uh, for an hour or so, just taking questions and stuff like that. So I don't know, just drop a comment if there's anything else you want to see or maybe the direction you want me to take this channel. Uh, let me know. Uh, thank you again for watching.